Beautiful. Beautiful. I picked up this 1982 radio TV set with a super unique design secret. So I'm gonna test whether it still works. And if it does, I'm gonna hack something together so I can use it to play whatever I want. Now this thing was a total impulse buy. I'm not even gonna lie. I saw it on eBay. I noticed the super unique design, which I'll show you guys in a second. And I bought it on the spot. The seller didn't make any note of whether it's tested or in working condition, but I thought worst case, it's gonna look super cool on my bookshelf. And it was only 80 bucks, so come on. Now you're probably wondering where the TV is. And that's what makes this design super unique. The TV is underneath it. <laughs> the top portion flips out to reveal the TV, turning from an AM FM radio to a mini CRT only four inches along the diagonal. I hope that was cool. I thought that was pretty cool. Now this thing was made in Osaka, Japan in 1982. That means it's over 40 years old. Now I'm 23, so every device I've ever owned has lasted less than 40 years. Some quick Googling tells me that your average AirPods last two to three years, your average iPhone lasts two to three years, and your average MacBook lasts five to eight years. This thing, on the other hand, has been sitting in some garage for who knows how long. Then it got shipped across the country in a cardboard box. So if it still works, I will be very impressed. And even if it does turn on, we'll still have to see if it can even get signal. And if it doesn't get signal, we'll still have to see whether we can get this old device to play modern high resolution videos. And if we can get all of that to work, I have a pretty cool use case in mind that I'll show you all at the end. Now, before I get there, please subscribe if you haven't already. I've got a really exciting video coming out in the next few weeks, collaborating with a much bigger, spirited, and YouTuber. I'm really excited to share that with you guys, so please help me get to 500 subscribers because it sounds so much cooler than 450. All right, Project Mini TV Phase 1. That sounds kind of lame. I need a cooler name for this. Project CRT, Project TV Mini, Project Bysider. Project Bysider Phase 1. Does it even turn on? Boom, there we go, yes it does. Phase one complete. Digital clock, check. Speakers and radio, check. And the moment of truth, the TV, check. No way. I'm actually astonished we've gotten this far so quickly. Now, none of this matters if we can't get signal. So now, the next big question is, does this thing get signal? And the answer is, no. No, we don't. Do we get signal if we deploy this massive, comically large antenna? I mean, seriously, look at this thing. It just keeps going. It touches my hanging plant. This thing is huge. Well, still no. At this point, I thought somehow that putting on these headphones would help me hear better, and I ended up just looking like some Morse code interpreter from World War II trying to listen in on the enemy. Now, I really know nothing about these old school TVs, so if you do, please let me know in the comments. Do TV stations even broadcast over the air anymore, or is it all cable? So anyway, plan A is a no-go, so we have to go to plan B, which was kind of plan A to begin with, so it's kind of plan A and a half, something like that. Basically, we need to try to hook this thing up to a modern signal. And the only way we have of doing that is this jack, which is not a headphone jack, but a 3.5 millimeter, 1 8 inch, 75 ohm external antenna socket, which for a lot of reasons is a problem. Now I'm gonna bike to one of New York City's hidden gems for hardware hackers and hobbyists like me to get a few things we need. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna explain what makes this so hard. These sockets allow you to plug in an antenna so you can put it on the roof or something to get better signal. That means this socket expects to be taking in radio waves, which are analog signals. And almost all modern video displays operate on digital signals. Analog signals are smooth, continuous electrical signals. These bad boys are all around us and they come straight from mother nature. The world is analog. Digital signals are discrete, meaning they can only exist in a finite number of states and they're sampled at finite time steps. So we need something that takes in digital signals like HDMI and outputs analog signals, but not just any analog signals, radio waves. That's what this little white box does. This is a radio frequency modulator. It takes in HDMI and transmits the audio and video as if they were radio waves coming over the air captured by an antenna. 
Then we send those signals through this thing, which is a coaxial cable. We add an elbow connector and finally an adapter to go from our coaxial cable to our antenna jack. So now, drum roll please. Power, lights, and... Nothing. So at this point, I did have a little mini heart attack because I thought that I'd flushed all this money down the drain just to find out that the external antenna jack didn't work. Oh, oh. Then I very quickly realized that I was being an idiot and the RF modulator only transmits on a very specific frequency of 67.25 megahertz. So if you tune the TV to that frequency, you get this. No way, no way. The cool thing about this is that I can pretty much use this just like any other external display. So if I drag this window out of bounds, you'll see it show up over here. Now some of the more astute among you, you know, the, the techies some might say, might have noticed something a little off about this. So let me just fix that. Oh, what is that? Ah. I'm really happy with this little thing and I really can't justify why. Some of the more pragmatic people out there are probably thinking this is literally just a smaller, worse external monitor, and I honestly have no rebuttal. There is nothing practical or useful about this, but it just makes me happy to look at. So I'm gonna leave it right next to my workspace, hooked up to a Raspberry Pi that's burned with some of my favorite movies. They're gonna be playing on a loop so that whenever I feel uninspired or unmotivated or discouraged, I can just reach over, flip this thing on, and remember why I love this format so much. I guess part of why I love this retro technology so much is because it feels like it comes from this sweet spot in history when technology was already really high quality and super useful, but it wasn't overwhelming yet. This stuff still served the user, it didn't try to capture your attention as a commodity. And each device served its own purpose, there was one thing to do one or two capabilities, instead of a single device that does everything. And sure, maybe that's less convenient than something like your all-powerful iPhone, but it's just so much easier to romanticize. Or maybe I just think it looks cool. Sue me. Is it normal that this thing is getting super hot, by the way? I feel like I should probably look into this if I'm just gonna leave it on forever.